I played my first challenger in six years and it went something like this. So in today's video, let's talk about this match and reflect on what it's like to play an ATP event after such a long time. Welcome back to Turning Pro at 30. What's up everyone, Karu here. And yes, my restart on the Challenger Tour did not go very well, but that's okay. It's part of the process of moving up the rankings and playing bigger events and I'm happy. Uh, that I played an ATP event after such a long time. This was the Morelos Open, a Challenger 75, and it was played in the city of Cuernacaba, Mexico. I was actually really looking forward to this event because it was played in a similar condition to the Morelia 15K event that I won last year. It was played on a hard court in altitude, I think about 1500 meters, and it's a condition that generally is good for my game. And the only problem was that he suited my first round opponent's game even better. So let's go over the match. Uh, I'm not gonna post the entire thing here because this is technically an ATP challenger match. Uh, I don't know about the copyrights. I wish I could use the entire match. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna go watch it after the, the video, you can go watch on Challenger TV. I played Ryan Segerman. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you know that we actually already played a match before and I posted here on my Tennis HQ. I'll leave a link, a link below as well. Ryan's a great singles player, but he's actually been killing it in doubles. And on in that day, the day we played, uh, he won the Mexico City Open in doubles with his partner and had to drive down to Cuernacaba to play his singles match against me in the quality. So pretty crazy day for him. And I knew the match wasn't gonna be easy. He has a cannon of a serve, playing in altitude was gonna be difficult. Um, and that's kind of exactly how the match went. It's pretty straightforward. Ryan served incredibly well, over 70% first serves and hitting it that big, that accurately, uh, and that consistently um, is just plain impressive. But let's go over some key moments of the match. Let me try to paint a picture of what happened. At 0-1, I had to save a couple break points already. You know, feeling a little tense. I uh, hit a couple double faults there, but was able to pull through that game. At 1-1, I had a 15-30, and he immediately shut that down with a first ball winner. After that, we had a couple straightforward, non-eventful holds. At 2-3, I put myself in a little bit of a hole again. I uh, had to come down from love 30, but was able to, to hold serve and stay in it. At 3 all, I was able to get to deuce on his serve, which was <laughs> pretty difficult to do. Um, but then at deuce, he does this. Some easy holds until 4-5, I'm serving. And at 4-5, I unfortunately played a really bad game, a couple errors, a couple double faults. Um, just kind of felt the pressure. Um, never felt like I was really in that set, uh, just basically surviving. Um, and I gave that, that set away. I was a bit annoyed with that because I got broken and he, that meant that he was gonna serve first again and keep me on that pressure. I'm always like chasing him, um, which created even more, uh, more pressure to hold. But in the second set, after a few easy holds, uh, at one, two, I was serving again and it got chippy. I didn't make enough first serves. Uh, Ryan was returning well. He was actually coming down from altitude, so he was, he was feeling like a million bucks while we were all kind of struggling. Uh, with the altitude from Morelos. But again, not enough for serves there. Gave him a chance to get into points. Um, and obviously that creates a bit more tension on my side as well. And um, I was broken, which <laughs> at that point was kind of a death sentence. But at 3-1, I was actually able to get to a break point at 30-40. Um, but he raced that pretty quickly with a great serve and first ball combo. After that, he held for 4-1. We had some easy holds there basically until 5-3 when he was serving for the match. At 5-3, I was able to play a few good points and make some returns uh, and get to deuce. But at deuce, he just closed the door on me with two unreturned serves, and that was it. Game 10 match, unfortunate loss in the first round. At the end of the day, Ryan just executed incredibly well. He kept the point short. He never really gave me any chance to grab momentum. But looking back at the match and watching it again, I have a few thoughts on my end. The first one is that I was never really able to play free. I mean, he was serving so well. He was putting so much pressure on me to hold um, that I, I wasn't able to assess the match and try to figure it out um, what would work, what, what wouldn't work. 
I was just basically survival mode the entire match because uh, I knew any breaks would be deadly. Number two, maybe I felt the moment a little bit, you know, playing a challenger in a long time and I really wanted to win and, and test myself at that level. Um, and at the way the match was being played out, I, I, I never was able to do anything <laughs> and it just kind of frustrated me. And I think, um, I think it made me too focused maybe on the outcome of the match um, and knowing, again, I was just kind of surviving out there. Uh, I didn't allow myself to like free up and just play. And like I said earlier, sometimes your opponent is just too good. I obviously don't like losing, but what annoys me the most sometimes is, is just the fact that I wasn't even able to to perform at a high, a high level. Things just happened so fast and I was just out of the tournament. Leading up to the match, I was practicing well. I felt good about the conditions already, um, but nothing really mattered. I wasn't able to execute anything in the match, which is props to him for keeping the match that way. Part of it, you learn it, you move on. And the last thing I need to address, because I posted a couple clips about this match already, him serving bombs, and a lot of people are like, why are you standing so close to the baseline? You have to understand we're playing in altitude. That ball is bouncing super high. So if I back up, he can take the pace off. He can kick it or he can go wide. He can be a bit more accurate with it. And that ball is going so far away from me. He can serve and volley. Visually, I could tell he liked when I backed up. And when I stepped in, it cut the angles a little bit. I was able to put more records on the ball. I just needed to play that game. Sometimes back up, sometimes go forward. And that's why I was so close to the line, especially on the second set, because I felt like when I went back, I had absolutely no chance. When I was a bit closer, I, you know, I, I'm fast enough, I react fast enough to, to put a, a racket on it. And if you watch the match, I actually made more returns um, than in my head during the match I thought I was making. So I was doing a decent job starting the point, um, but again, he was just, just then taking over the first ball. Um, it was really difficult. I was trying my best <laughs> to just do something to put some pressure on his serve, but uh, I couldn't that day. But aside from the result, uh, it was still a pretty productive week in Morello's. I stayed for uh, five more days, just training with guys, watching the matches. Um, obviously, when you level up from ITFs to ATP challengers, um, there's a lot more guys who are professional and, and are really working on their stuff and committed to, to, to the game. Uh, so it was nice to just stay around, soak it in a little bit. Um, Cause I knew, you know, the following week I was gonna play Acapulco, which we're gonna talk about on the next video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. But all in all, aside from the result, um, it was still a really productive week. And again, I was just really happy to be playing at this level again. It's been, <laughs> it's been quite some time and you know, what, eight months ago, I was just coaching. I wasn't even close to sniffing this level. So it's, uh, it's cool to see, cool to, cool to be a part of it again. So if, again, if you wanna watch the full match, I'll leave a link down below. And with the, that link right next to it, there's a lot of links there to help the channel, you know? So go crazy down there, go crazy in the description. And guys, before we end the video here, I need to tell you about the newest version of Improve, version 1.4 that just launched. This series, Turning Pro 30, would not be happening without the support and the sponsorship of Team Improve. And they're way more than a sponsor. The founder of Improve, Clay Thompson, is a longtime friend and former teammate at UCLA. He and his team are on an incredible mission to help people by creating personalized and high quality action plans at a price point affordable to everyone. Again, stop spending money with a random course from a guy you don't really know who's gonna teach you how to hit a straight arm forehand, forget that. Just subscribe to the My Tennis HQ School on Improve for $3.99 a month and you get all the instruction you need. All the content in there is curated by me. It's all the stuff I would just tell you if we were having a lesson, uh, but it's all in the app, it's all categorized, and it's easier for you to follow and track your progress. And shout out to everyone who has signed up for the school already. We're building this together. We're listening to your feedback. So for version 1.4, we have three new features that we're excited to announce. Number one is golden threads. We want to make the onboarding process a little less confusing. As you sign up, you'll be welcomed by me, complete a few action items, a couple tutorials. Then based on your level, I'll give you some of my favorite tips and stories and experiences that I've had in my playing career. Then based on your level, you're gonna get a few action items to get you started. 
uh, some of the things that I believe the most and when it comes to learning tennis. And after that, the platform will take over by creating the personalized action items for your game. Number two is in-app browsing. No need to leave the app anymore when completing action items. It's all done in the app. This update was based directly on user feedback. So thanks for that tip. Everything in app now. So number three, recently added action items. You can now easily find recently added action items right on the discover tab. We just released a collection about my fitness journey with Fit for Tennis. And you can see the exact workouts I've been doing in the recently added section under exercises. Also, all improved subscribers get a 20% off on any fit for tennis purchases. Joining our school is the best way to support my career. Uh, without Team Improve, I would not be playing professional tennis right now. So by supporting Improve, you're directly contributing to my career. Go check it out, link is in the description. Join our school right now. Uh, thanks for watching and next video, we're, we're gonna be covering Acapulco, where I actually qualified for the first round. We've got some good matches in there. Um, so stay tuned. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.